So um, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, you know, and considering what I wanted to share was sitting with the equinox and I was sitting with the year of the dragon uh, because it is the year of the dragon and, and the dragon is very special to me and my family and my legacy. And um, so interestingly, I was also sitting with some gene keys and um, and I'm not an expert in the gene keys, but I'll just riff for one moment on this because it really helped me to find my way in to what I wanted to say. So gene key 50 is one of the keys in my um, activation sequence the shadow of that key is corruption in the, in the sense of data corruption, right? Like if your data is corrupted, then what it produces is uh, not uh, what it should be, right? It's, 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 got a, it's got a glitch somewhere in the translation of the, of the information. And it's really about translating our experiences in this life through the medium of fear. The gift of that key is equilibrium, which made me think about the equinox because we are in this moment of equilibrium. And that gift stems from honesty and interaction with one another. And that made me think of my father who talked often about honest self-expression and about how you know, it's easy to, in a way, to be in our patterns of reaction, to be in patterns of being cocky or whatever it is, right? But to actually be honest with yourself and your experience and your inner sense um, is hard to do and it takes practice. And the city level of that key is harmony which is about bringing these fragment pieces or about bringing opposites into resonance. And that made me think of the dragon and I will share why. My father had a quote that said, the oneness of all life is a truth that can be fully realized only when false notions of a separate self Whose, I, whose destiny is thought to be apart from the whole are forever annihilated. So we find our equilibrium through intimate, vulnerable, honest exchange. And the resulting harmony that can come is by the bringing of opposites into resonance, which brings me to the symbolism of the dragon. My father was born in the year of the dragon and in the hour of the dragon, and he went by the name Lei Xiu Long, which means little dragon. So he was a dragon through and through. <laughs> and interestingly for the Dreamark folks, in Chinese mythology, the dragon is a composite creature made up of nine different beings. It has the horns of a deer, the head of a camel, the neck of a snake, the abdomen of a large cockle shell, the scales of a carp, the claws of an eagle, the paws of the tiger, and ears of an ox, and the eyes of a demon. So you can see why I think this is so fascinating. And equally fascinating to me is that there are dragon myths that exist all over the world. And so many of the characteristics of these myths from all the continents of the earth have a lot of commonalities that transcend the time and the distance between the cultures that created them. So dragons have been living with us since time immemorial. So to me, what does the dragon speak of? It speaks of um, dragons are exponential creatures. This to me is the energy that they herald. They bid us to unify our being, to become whole. They know that there will be challenges to face, fears and wounds to heal, discomfort to feel. But on the other side of that journey is the birth of a being of exponential love, exponential potency and exponential magic. 
we like to say uh, in my work that one plus one doesn't equal two, one plus one equals 11. And that to me is sort of the energy of the dragon. So this to me is the dragon's offering for the individual. It unites the masculine and the feminine and it brings magic to the mundane and it brings grounding to your magic. If allowed, the dragon can help you face your fears in order to reveal the priceless treasure that is hidden within your heart. Dragon teaches the alchemical power that spins mere existence and survival into spiritual gold. Its body represents the union of differences and the marriage of opposites, the integration of extremes into oneness. Being the fusion of what flies and what crawls, it stands for synthesis and evolution with the result of healing all inner conflict into the birth of our sacred being. The dragon transforms. It ignites the sacred task of becoming one with life. It occupies the domain of the spiritual warrior and the commitment to release oneself from limitation. Fly with the dragon and unlock the ability to call upon your many gifts and to give them freely. The secret to the height of its flight lies within the depths of your inner knowing. Become one with your nature, your own and the world's, and dragon helps you bring coherence to body, mind, heart, soul and spirit as one thing with infinite expressions. Call upon the dragon when you need strength, when you seek freedom, when you wish to roar, and when you claim the wholeness of your heart. As my father said, not to localize or partialize is the end of spiritual training. When it is nowhere, it is everywhere. When it occupies only one-tenth, then it is absent in the other nine-tenths. Let a person discipline himself to let the mind go on its way instead of trying deliberately to confine it somewhere. Let it be the one without opposite, infinite and unceasing. So on this equinox time, how do we come to be in balance? We come to understand balance by the experience of being out of balance. And life, which is constantly moving and shifting and changing, is the experience of out of balance. And in fact, you, you can't move without some small moment of out of balance. In order to take a step, you have to pick one foot up off the ground and be on just one leg for even a moment in order to take that step forward. And so it is with this world, which is a world of duality. That is the experience. But know that it has a purpose. It is to be used to understand the oneness through that painful experience of separateness. And to wish to seek the path away from that experience of separateness and toward that oneness. As my father said, the problem is never apart from the solution. The problem is the solution. And it is perception alone that can help you to remove all obstacles. So as you spring forward or fall into this season of equinox that is presenting itself um, in this dragon year, Consider how to use the duality rather than be used by the duality, to reach for the lesson, the helpful reframe, and to trust in life and whatever comes toward your soul's experience and to view it as how it can help you. Let uh, challenging exchanges point you toward your own healing or toward compassion for the suffering of another. Let life show you what is for you and what is not for you. 
until you can relinquish thinking altogether, seek the way of thinking that supports your life view, that supports your heart. I always love that in Buddhism, uh, they call the heart the root mind. And we need to put our mind into our heart. As my father said, don't think, feel, right? Feel into yourself, feel your discomfort, feel your pain so that you can release it. Stay present to what is actually happening instead of guarding against what is not happening or may never happen. Ask life how you can create with it rather than be in resistance to it because creativity is the path forward. Creativity is of the present. And to be creative is to ask yourself how you might like to work with and shape the present moment. Life will give you the cues if you can feel when it resists and when it gives. So use the duality, the experiences of this life to point toward the oneness and trust life at every turn. I would encourage you to step into this forward practice, to look for the helpful re reframe, to encourage you toward your healing and your greatness rather than to remain stuck in an albeit familiar place sometimes. I always say, we don't wanna fear the unknown because everything you want is waiting for you there. So let the dragon be your guide. And I might just wanna end quickly on um, some of my father's words. I would invite you to um, close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. This is, um, these are his words that I've put together in my own special way, which is something I like to do uh, to sort of tap into whatever I'm resonating with and feeling in the moment. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Do not strive to hold the mind anywhere, but let it fill up the whole body. Let it flow freely throughout the totality of your being. Experience a continuous actualization and differentiation of form. This fluidity leads to interchangeability. This self-witness leads to awareness. This totality leads to ultimate freedom. So move and revolve in the line of creation and step into duality, which is in harmonious relationship and return the all to the one the divine intelligence, the source of all things, and be filled with life and power and the love of all beings. And so it is, and so we are. Aho. Uh -huh.